Okay, so now let's study uh, using functions in parameters and why would you want that? So in the simple first example, what we're going to do is we're going to define a function. So let me copy paste this, create it, a file. Funks as params dot rec. Code, of course. Open this file. Okay. Now we're going to paste. Why can't I? Why is Interesting. I do control V and it shows a B. Oh, because I copied a B. I thought I had copied this text. I thought my keyboard was crazy. Anyway, so this is the example I want to study. Um, and what we have here is, okay, we have a function, function that doubles, doubles the input, right? So if you give it 10, double of 10 would be 20. I can even do let me add um, tests right in the beginning. Okay, if I can do check uh, equal, right, and I can do double of 10 would be 20, and double of 20 will be 40. Okay, let me comment out this code just so you guys believe me. And I rack it, rack it this. Okay, things worked out. Um, I just want to make something that is that has a bug in it so that you guys believe me that everything is working. Okay, and I gave the computer the the double of forty two of twenty one, which is forty two. But when I do, um, but because I didn't update this, it got an error. Okay, so things are working. So you see that double behaves as expected, and it's not surprising because what you're doing is two times n. Okay, so now what we do is we're defining this function called monotonic. And what we're checking is if we call f, a certain function, uh, and we pass it a value, we see we, we're going to check if, a func if that function is monotonic in that point. And what monotonic means is that um, x should be uh, calling the function should always return a value that is at least as big as the input. Right, so that's basically what monotonic means. Although when you talk about a function being monotonic, this would be true for all inputs. And in this particular case, what monotonic, monotonic is checking is just for a single point. Okay, so let's just uh, show you an example. So we we know that because we're doubling the number, it's at least as big as the input, right? Because it's going to be twice as big. So if we do monotonic, monotonic of double, and I give it x, oh, I give it a number, right, 10. So in the case of 10, this would be true, right? And if I were to define something like define uh, add 1, right, where I do n, what it does is plus uh, 1. And then I do another one with this uh, sub, sub 1. What it does is 1 minus 1. Okay. So I know that uh, double is monotonic. I know that add plus 1 is monotonic. And I would expect that sub minus 1 is not monotonic. Right? And as we can see, um, first one is true, second one is true, and the third one is false, as we expected. Right? So let's write the test, check true, right? Because double is monotonic on that point. Add one is monotonic on that point. And sub one is not monotonic on that point, okay? So what we did was we defined the function called monotonic that takes a function as a parameter and we are using it to kind of compute the value, right? To not kind to compute a value, uh, which uses the the return, or which uses or which applies that function to some value. In this case, the the second uh, parameter. Um, so that would be one way of thinking about how would why would you want a function as a parameter, right? So now let's uh, in this slide I just gave you an example of as to why. Um, the result is what it is. So in this case, I'm checking the result of calling monotonic of double. 
and I'm I'm actually going ahead and I'm showing you guys how would the evaluation work. So what the evaluation does behind the scenes, if you have monotonic of double, what you should do now is return the result of the function definition. That's why we have this here. Um, and we replace f by the first parameter uh, and x by, sorry, for the first argument and x by the second argument. So that's why you have um, f of w and then x here. So that's why you have three. And then what we do is again, we do the same thing. Uh, and now we have a lambda of 2n, right? Because defined, the way it's defined is, um, you can just uh, highlight that. So I just looked up the value of the double function, which is a lambda, right? As you know, function definitions are just a syntactic sugar for a lambda. Um, and then we do the same thing and we replace the lambda by its contents. Uh, and finally, we simplify the expression. We have six, and then now everything is values. So now it's ready to uh, res uh, resolve onto true. Okay. Now let's look at this example. That is a bit more, um, a bit more advanced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste this on the bottom. going to remove rec unit from here and I already have the double implemented. So what is apply n? Okay, apply n is a recursive function. It's an interesting function. Actually, here is a bit bigger, so I'm going to going to go through the slides first. Uh, so why does apply n does? Well, apply n takes an initial value of n, takes a function and takes a an argument. And the idea is that you're going to call f of f of f of f of x okay n times so how do you do that well it's pretty simple right the way you do it is you um what is getting smaller first thing is what you should be asking right so i would like to implement this code i already have the behavior of it if i were to run it n times right so what i want to do kind of try to derive this code so if I do apply n of um, let's see f and I do uh, n let's say 3 and then x what this becomes is um, apply n of f to x right because what we see here is that we call f many times. Okay, so this would be the same as this, right? And then we'd have replace this by apply n of f1x. What that does is apply n of f0. Okay, and what this does is f f of um, f x. Okay, so this is how it should work, right? So it's gonna run uh, this as it's making n smaller until it becomes zero, and in which case you just return. Do we just return x? Ah, oh, we just return x. Sorry, I computed one too many times it should be like this okay so now we we are able to derive the the base case and the recursive case right so define of apply n of f n x would be you do a cond right what is getting smaller all the time the thing that is getting smaller is this the, the n right okay so what we need to check is we need to do a condition and check on that number so let's do that What is the base case? Well, first, by looking here, the base case has to be n to be 0. And if that's the case, then what do we return? Return x. Okay, so return x. Otherwise, what do we do? We do f of 
recursive thing, right? So else we do f of apply n, and then we pass the same f, f remains unchanged. We decrement dn, right? So minus n1, and same x, right? Because x remains the same. Okay. Now let's compare this to the code that we have. Let's see what we did. Ah, that's very interesting. Very interesting. So in this case, they're equivalent code, right? One is um, applying the F outside, and this one is applying the F inside. And now this is a great... Um, okay, so this is mostly how I derived, how you derive apply in. Okay. So this is uh, version one. This is the version of the slides, right? So what is the difference between one and the other? Let's do two. Let's make sure that they work the same, right? That I didn't do any mistakes this time. Okay, I'm going to copy paste this. I'm going to run it with uh, version two. Okay, first thing I'm going to do, see if it works. Okay, got an error here. And I got an error here. 44 and 44. Okay, so my code has a bug. Let's see. Okay, found the problem. Okay. Okay, so this is um, this had a bug here, where the condition was flipped, and because it was flipped, it was always hitting the base case. So regardless of how I was computing, you would always get the same um, result. You would always get uh, this branch. Anyways, so this is fixed, and now we have these two versions. They're both uh, equal in terms of results. So I have here multiple tests calling version one and multiple tests calling version two. Um, now what I would like to do is I just want to look at both versions and what is the difference uh, between both of them, module the bug that was fixed. Well, the main difference, maybe try to answer this, and we talked about this in our last lesson. So maybe remember what we've learned there and try to think how we could apply here. Okay, so I'm going to give the answer. The basic change here is one version is tail call optimized and the other one is not. So this version is tail call optimized because the recursive call is in the tail position. Whereas here in the tail position you have F and the recursive call is nested inside F. So this version is not tail call optimized. Whereas this version is uh, tail call, tail call optimized. Okay. Another thing that might be interesting to see is see how, look, let's see how, can we see? One thing I wanted to, to kind of show you guys is that because they are built in this way, actually one works uh, in the reverse order than the other. But we'll have an example that uh, explains that a bit more directly. So let's not let's not go ahead of ourselves and talk about what's going to be discussed in a future lesson. Okay, but here basically what I wa wanted to say is show you a more contrived example of using um, a function as a parameter. You may be wondering, why do I want something like this? And, um, well, there are some cases um, where you would want that. And we're basically going to explain that uh, in, in this module because we're going to cover how some seemingly um, weird functions can be used to combine with other functions uh, to great effect. So that's the idea of using functions and com combining functions as like libraries. Uh, but that's not the focus of this lesson, and basically this example is really to just uh, highlight the importance of um, 
how the evaluation works. And I think you should try to go this step by step and think about how and why uh, all the various steps of the um, evaluation go this way. Okay, and in the next uh, slide, I'm going to cover something very important that also appears in your homework assignment, which is using function data, data structures.